Hi, in this video I'm going to show you what is Rudder through a demo of its main features. Uh, Rudder is a continuous configuration tool which means it combines uh, configuration management features with uh, continuous auditing capabilities. Uh, Rudder focuses on production needs uh, by ensuring uh, uh, continuous reliability through secure changes and uh, constant overview of uh, the current compliance state of all your uh, devices and operating systems. Uh, so this demo will be uh, split in three parts. Three parts. The first one will be um, an overview of uh, rather main features. The second one uh, will show you a continuous configuration example, and the third one uh, will uh, focus on real life issues and give more uh, advanced uh, features overview. So. Um, uh, Rudder uh, is based on a lightweight agent that runs on a wide range of devices that has to be installed on uh, every managed node and on a central Rudder server that will define the configuration uh, to apply and collect compliance information from the nodes. Um, the, the applied configuration can be defined through a user-friendly web interface or uh, can be automated through an API or a CLI. Um, and the applied configuration is continuously checked and can trigger an alert or uh, be automatically repaired depending on the configuration. So here uh, you can see a rather dashboard uh, which uh, shows an overview of the current compliance of the infrastructure. Um, we'll now have a look more precisely at how we manage nodes in uh, Rudder. So once an agent has been installed on a node, it will gather uh, hardware and software information and send them to the server, which will uh, either accept or not uh, our uh, new node. So here we can have a look at an example. We have uh, we received an inventory from Web02, uh, the Web02 node, um, and we can uh, have a look more precisely at what the inventory contains. Uh, so it has every uh, hardware uh, references, a uh, list of file system and network interfaces, and also a complete list of installed uh, software. Uh, all this information will allow uh, classifying the nodes and assigning them the right uh, policies. So now we can uh, accept this node. So I select it and I accept it. Um, once it has been accepted, uh, the router server will generate a configuration for this node and the agent will automatically uh, fetch it and apply it on the node. So now we have um, accepted uh, a node, uh, we can have a look at how we can use uh, the inventory data to uh, classify the nodes. Uh, in Rudder, we will define uh, groups, uh, which are uh, basically sets of nodes, uh, based on a on a criteria, we'll have a look, uh, for example, at the Linux group, which has a very simple definition. It's a group that contains all uh, nodes that have the, the operating system uh, equals uh, Linux. Uh, so here we can uh, see the list. Um, we can also have a look at a quite different uh, group definition, for example, with the web servers um, uh, group. Here uh, it's based on a property which says uh, the app property must have the web uh, value. Uh, actually, node properties um, does not come do not come from the the node inventory, but are defined uh, on the the server side. So we can have a look, for example, at our web O2 uh, details that we the node we just accepted, and we can see here it has uh, automatically uh, two um, properties defined, but we can uh, define a new one manually, for example, one that will uh, make it part of the web service group, which is app equals web. And now uh, web02 is a uh, part of uh, uh, the, um, the web service group and will be assigned policies based on this uh, on this group. So um, these uh, groups allow uh, organizing the, the configuration uh, based on multiple layers. Uh, that allow uh, a clear uh, distinction between uh, different types of uh, configuration. So now we have um, accepted a node, we have defined uh, some groups, we will need to define some configuration to apply to these nodes. Uh, in Rudder, an appliable configuration is called a directive. Um, you can have a look at uh, 
the directives uh, menu here we have a, a tree of all available uh, directive templates actually which are called uh, techniques um, and uh, they cover all the basic uh, system configuration needs uh, so for example we can create a new uh, user on our uh, on our systems so I will uh, select my uh, user management uh, technique and uh, for example uh, provide it uh, a username and give it a password I can also uh, set the name of the directive which will be a, a new user for example and then I can save it and um, we have defined uh, a block of configuration uh, that is applicable to, to some nodes. Uh, how do we do this? Uh, well actually we will make a link between a set of uh, directives and a set of groups using uh, a rule so here uh, is the list of currently defined rules and you will modify uh, one of them to apply our new directive so for example we can take the, the a rule that will apply in all uh, our systems uh, uh, which is this one and here we can go to the settings tab and then we can select the directives we want to to, uh, to link to this rule and here I can select my new user directive and save the rule. Uh, you, you can see here that this rule is linked to the both Linux and Windows groups. So I can save it. And uh, starting from now uh, we have made a link uh, between our uh, uh, Linux group and our new user directives which means uh, that the configuration that will be applied to our nodes will contain this new user. So it will be automatically applied uh, starting from now uh, within five minutes uh, on all our nodes but we can trigger the application manually to see how it works. So uh, the first thing to do is to update the policy that is applied on the node. So I will use the rudder agent update command. Now I have fetched the latest version of the policies. I will uh, apply them uh, locally with a rudder agent run. So now uh, we see that the agent has run and um, here we can see a repaired line uh, for the user uh, user which means uh, we made a change to the system and that we actually added our new user. Uh, you can also notice that uh, the run took uh, less than two seconds uh, which shows uh, how uh, fast uh, our agent is and uh, which explains it can run on uh, on very uh, small devices. Um, we can uh, switch back to the web uh, view to see how uh, this information uh, is visible uh, at the node level for example. So I will uh, go to my uh, web01 details uh, in the compliance reports and we can see here it's all green and if I uh, go into more details in my uh, in my rule, we can see here that we have our new user directive with uh, one component that is uh, currently in a repaired state. So the information uh, is uh, is now um, available uh, in the server. Um, so now we'll have a look at uh, a setting that is available at directive level or uh, node level which is called the policy mode so we can uh, edit our uh, previous uh, directive um, and here you can see the policy mode field it allows uh, selecting a policy mode which can either be enforce or audit um, the enforce mode will uh, actually make changes on the systems to uh, apply the configuration or to try to apply it um, while the, the audit mode will only um, check for uh, non-compliances and report to the server without making any modification to the systems. Uh, this allows uh, gathering data, data about uh, the current infrastructure state before actually applying uh, a configuration rule or uh, maybe um, giving access uh, to some QA or security uh, users to make some checks on the system without taking risk to break them, uh, for example. Uh, we can 
um, have a look at. Uh, we, we saw the the configuration uh, details at the node level, but we can uh, have a look at some other uh, views. So here we have an updated dashboard with our uh, new property, and we can also um, see the the compliance uh, at the the rules level, uh, which is more a uh, business oriented, which because it will show. Uh, uh, the state of um, the configuration uh, by uh, by different uh, types of uh, configuration. For example, if I go in my uh, the rule we modified, we can see that four of our nodes have already applied the configuration and reported back to the server, and we're still waiting for data from two of our nodes. And here we have a, a detail of um, of the changes made uh, uh, for this rule, and here we have the the, the complete logs uh, from every system that has applied it. So we can really track every change that has been made on our nodes uh, through this, uh, this rules page. Um, we can now um, um, notice that our uh, policy has been applied on both our uh, Linux and Windows um, nodes from a uh, a single uh, configuration point which allows easy management of multi-platforms uh, infrastructures. Um, we will now move on to the second part of the demo which is the continuous uh, reliability uh, um, uh, part. Uh, we'll uh, simulate uh, a networking issue between our uh, Manage node and the router server, and we'll see how the node can uh, continue uh, enforcing the uh, the configuration. So to simulate this, I will uh, unplug um, the um, the network cable between um, uh, the node and the server uh, here. So if I switch back to my node and if I try to update the policies. Uh, we will see that the, this will fail because the, the network link is uh, actually down. Um, this simulates um, either a network partition or a server unavailability for uh, any reason. And um, what we'll see is that uh, uh, you can see here on the applied policies that we deploy a small website, uh, which is actually a simple HTML page on this server. Um, so yes, uh, update failed. Um, so what we can do now is to simulate uh, a configuration, a local configuration problem. For example, if someone deletes our website, uh, we can see that it's not available anymore. Um, what happens uh, is that the agent will continue uh, running uh, uh, regularly, um, even if the um, configuration policy update will fail, it will still enforce uh, the the configuration. So I can simulate it by running it manually with a router agent run. Um, here you can see our website deployment uh, components are in repaired state, uh, which means they uh, that the agent actually made changes to the um, to the system. Um, if I go back to my website, we can see uh, the application is back uh, because the agent uh, restored it. So this allows uh, keeping uh, systems compliant even uh, even if uh, the link with the, the server is uh, lost. Um, so here it is for the second part. We'll now move on to the last one. Um, and we'll uh, get back to rather web interface. Um, the first uh, thing I'm going to show you is um, how we can define more uh, customs uh, policies. Here uh, in the directives tree we saw uh, just uh, before in the first part, we can see that we have access to a uh, quite large uh, uh, choice of uh, directives templates, but uh, it does not cover all use cases, obviously. Uh, you will need some specific uh, uh, policies for, uh, for example, for custom applications, and so in order uh, to avoid uh, having to learn a new language, uh, here we ha you have a technique editor application, uh, which is part of Rudder and which allows creating new techniques very uh, easily through a web interface. 
So here we'll make a simple example of an NTP configuration technique, which will uh, actually configure the NTP uh, service uh, on the on the systems configuration here. Okay, so how does this work? Uh, we will in fact use some uh, building blocks called the uh, generic methods, and we'll add them to the technique. Um, and they will be uh, uh, executed by the agent. Um, so here we can start with a package uh, method to install the NTP uh, package and ensure it's uh, always present. So uh, here I pass it the name of the package. Um, I will also uh, define a configuration for this uh, service with a file configuration method. I uh, will here use a file enforce content uh, method. Uh, so I will modify the etc ntp.com file and I will add a ntp server for our node. For example, here I will enforce the content of the file. So now we have installed the package, we have defined the configuration, we are still lacking uh, uh, the service restart if we uh, modify the content of the configuration file. So I will add the last uh, method, uh, which will be service restart. I will provide it uh, with the name of our service, which is NTP. So if I save this technique at this point, uh, the NTP service will be restarted at every agent run, which is not what we want. Uh, actually, we want to only restart it when the file was modified. And in order to achieve this, we have a mechanism called uh, conditions, um, and every method uh, when uh, it has run will define some conditions based on its outcome and here we can select the repaired condition of our uh, file modification and make it a condition to execute the service restart method and now um, the, the service will only be restarted when necessary so I can save my technique Okay, and if I get back to the directives um, tree, uh, you can see here that my NTP configuration uh, directive has appeared and is now usable as like any other uh, uh, built-in uh, technique. Uh, so even if you uh, if you need some specific uh, configuration, you won't have to learn a new language and you can uh, build uh, some complex uh, techniques uh, through this uh, technique editor. Uh, we'll now have a look at um, non-compliance analysis. Uh, we, we saw just before that uh, we can track uh, changes, but there are some times where um, we cannot fix a configuration or if we are in audit mode where the configuration is non-compliant and we don't uh, modify it actually. So uh, we can see how we can track this down, for example, with uh, this uh, rule that has uh, quite a high rate of non-compliance and we can uh, see where, um, where these um, non-compliances are in the, the configuration. So uh, here we have, uh, we can see that the, the rule uh, contains two directives. Uh, we can, for example, uh, select this one, and then we can uh, drill down until the, the, the lowest level to see uh, exactly what is wrong, and then to allow uh, uh, the problem to be fixed uh, easily. Uh, so here we can see, for example, that a non-compliance in this component is uh, because uh, the etc deny file exists uh, while it shouldn't. Um, we'll now move on to the next point, which is about uh, collaboration between Rudder users. Uh, actually, uh, the first thing, the first useful uh, feature uh, for this is the event log. Uh, the event log contains all changes that have been made to the applied configuration. Uh, and here, for example, uh, we can uh, try to find the changes we just made. Here we can see that we added a directive. And if I uh, go into the details, we can see it's a user host management uh, technique. And we here we have the, the precise uh, details of um, the provided uh, information in the, the web form. 
Um, this even allows to uh, restore the configuration to a previous state uh, to cancel a, a mistake in the configuration, for example. Um, so this allows uh, an, an auditing of uh, every change that is made to the configuration uh, by user and by date. So you can track back the history of uh, the, the infrastructure configuration through this, uh, this, uh, this page. So it's the, the first collaboration tool. Um, the second one are um, uh, rather uh, roles. Actually, I'm connected with an administrator user, but we have different uh, types of roles in Rudder, uh, which allow uh, giving access to specific types of users. We can have read-only uh, roles for uh, some compliance professionals. We can have um, um, no uh, roles that only give access to a part of the the information uh, for a specific uh, needs. Uh, and different types of users. Um, the last point in uh, this uh, collaboration uh, features uh, is um, a built-in uh, double validation mechanism that we call change requests. So it's now disabled, but I will enable it. Here you can see that a little uh, field has appeared in the, the, the upper menu, and we have uh, some pending uh, uh, change request and if I try to make a change for example to modify my um, new user directive here and if I set the, um, the state of the user to absent and I try to save it uh, instead of applying the change to our nodes it will only open a change request that will have to be validated by someone else in order to be uh, uh, actually applied to the, the machine so this allow uh, better control on what is applied and collaboration between uh, users. Um, the last uh, point in this uh, third section uh, will be about the integration of Rudder with uh, other tools. Uh, Rudder provides a complete API that allows integ easy integration with uh, different types of tools. Some common integrations are uh, with uh, software release pipelines and with uh, CMDBs. And we'll here show you an example of uh, integration with the ServiceNow CMDB. So uh, we can uh, we, we just added a new node which is Web02, and we can have a look in the ServiceNow uh, list of nodes, and we can see that Web02 has appeared here. Um, and we can uh, notice here that we have an environment uh, column here uh, and that we have no value for Web02, we can try to modify it and set it, for example, to QA. Let's say if it's a QA server, I will save it on the ServiceNow side. And if I get back to the to Rudder, and if I trigger um, um, a properties uh, synchronization update, which will would be done automatically uh, uh, in any, any way, um, I can now go to my uh, Web02 details. Um, in the not properties tab and you can see that a new property has appeared uh, which has the QA value and it's actually synchronized from uh, um, the data stored in uh, the ServiceNow CMDB. So it's an example of how uh, you can uh, use information from other tools in Rudder configuration. Um, so that's over for the, um, the third part and that's over for the demo. So Thank you. And you can find more information about Rudder features and uh, what, uh, how it can be useful in the Rudder website or in the Rudder documentation. Thank you.